Uh, Tim McGonigal and uh, Lori White um, are the, respectively the superintendent of Manatee County uh, and uh, Sarasota County Public Schools. Tim, so you're in Manatee, you're looking at $29 million um, a, a loss, at least according to the governor's budget. Um, can you tell us um, how that will affect your budget and what you would have to do in response to that? Well, well first, our estimate is we're going to have to cut $15 million. So our, our analysis of the governor's budget is that we would have to cut $29 million if it got approved as it was presented. So, um, and really, to put it in perspective, since the class size amendment, we, we have a $340 million general fund budget that pays for teachers and classrooms and utilities, things like that. But you can't touch teachers because they're required under the class size amendment. So you're really only cutting the other 30%, which is transportation and office of the principal and things like that. So that's really the difficult piece of this. So we are planning, we're working through our process right now to develop uh, a recommendation for $15 million in budget cuts with our budget cut committee. And we are working on our worst case scenario of 29 million. Right now, we don't have an answer for the 29 million. It would be devastating to our programs, to services, to students. Mm -hmm. What kind, can you just give us an example? I mean, you mentioned some of the support services, but does, what, does this get down into the classroom if, if you're looking at those kinds of cuts? If we were looking at 29 million, there's no doubt it would be to the classroom. Yes. Okay. Whether that would be elective programs, whether that would be salary reductions, uh, across the board, everything, everything would be on the table. All right. And kind of tell us about your recent experience in terms of what your budget has done in Manatee over the last few years. Well, we've cut $46 million out of our general fund budget in the last three years, in addition to uh, another $100 million out of our capital budget. So, and our district, our leadership has really focused on, um, on saving the classroom, really maintaining level of service to students. So we have, uh, we've cut 116 district level positions out and we started at the top. Uh, we've cut one assistant superintendent, we've cut two executive directors, and we've downplayed down, uh, reduced two executive directors down to directors. So we've really started at the top and trying to make our cuts from the district level. Okay, thank you. All right, um, Lori, kind of the same approach. Uh, what are you looking at in terms of what you think is realistic and what kind of cuts would you have to make and where would those go? Well, first you need to know the $22 million, um, there were some errors in the governor's budget, and it would be worse than that. Um, he projected an FTE um, amount that um, we don't see, and he also looked at property values of declining a little over um, 2%, and we're looking at um, minimally 5%. So we know his budget would be more than that. And you have to understand, he does not include the ERA funds in that uh, reduction, which the state used in a significant amount to fill the hole two years ago. In our um, budget, just looking at what ERA funds are in our FEFP, our regular basic funding is over 14 million. So that's in addition to that 22 million that would result with the governor's budget. And which funds were those, I'm sorry? Those were the uh, federal stabilization dollars. Okay. Um, now we've gotten one small pot of money, about eight million in our school district of education funds um, that uh, we have put, set aside to try to mitigate the fall. So this is really a catastrophic two year issue. Um, as we see, after going through three years, our um, total amount of reductions is of both reductions and cost avoidance of over 100 million over the last three years, 540 positions, some of which also was with declining enrollment, so not all budget driven. So um, as Tim said, you can only cut so many positions and meet the constitutional class size. Everyone is reduced at the uh, district level. You're as thin as you can be and still do the work of which legislative mandates continue to come down and require additional um, um, mandates such as um, the whole teacher evaluation with the um, with assessments so we know that we have to go through collective bargaining and look at salary and benefits as a major part of this we already had made the decision to use um, 20 million in reserves um, and still have a seven and a half percent um, unrestricted fund balance but again that's a one year um, solution that becomes much more difficult the next year. Um, and my real concern is because we've got to look at salary and benefits, we've already started those discussions. You've already, we know that the retirement um, 
that will be perceived as a cut in terms of a contribution. People will see that as a reduction in their pay. So we'll go into collective bargaining with perhaps people already feeling that they've had a reduction. Plus, if the governor vetoes the budget, if he's not satisfied, collective bargaining is not likely to conclude at the, um, until we know what the revenues are going to be from the legislature. And so a real concern is the whole timing of being able to have schools up and running for the next fall. Okay. Tim, let me just ask you one quick uh, question. Um, uh, you would mentioned and you've had the, a lot of discussions publicly about the class size amendment and the impacts. Uh, you have to do those in the core curriculum classes. Are you going to have to look at cutting, say, arts and music and phys ed programs and those kinds of things in order to meet your obligations on the class size amendment in the core classes? No, we're not going to do that because of class size amendment. We are going to do other strategies, uh, probably some virtual education and also mixed grade level classrooms at elementary schools. Um, you know, the class size amendment really takes away some decision-making authority of our principals and district-level people to make decisions in the best interest of the academic success of students. It's really just to meet a mathematical goal or requirement of the Constitution. Okay. And that's kind of frustrating for our people. Sure. Okay. Thank you both. Um, and you had mentioned uh, the, the governor's budget was based on about a 2.5% decrease in the property tax rule. Jim, Lay, y'all, the county is anticipating what? Reduction? Five to seven. Five to seven. And Jim Seifert and Manti? Seven. Seven percent. So obviously there will be some difference there unless y'all are wrong. <laughs>